Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Jose L. Garcia. I'm a retired lieutenant from New York City Fire Department with 38 years of public service. 35 years with the FDNY, three years in the military, 1970 to 1973. Vietnam, 71-72, at the tender age of 18. My older brother was also in Vietnam in 1968 during the Tet Offensive. Within my family, we have two combat veterans that have served this country. My last 10 years within the fire department were right here in City Island. I have answered the calls for drug overdoses right here on the island. I was also the first due officer at the Boris Yacht Club fire a couple of years ago, one I won't forget. I have been living in New York City for a period of over 60 years. I know I don't look my age, 65. <laughs> I have my Medicaid card. <laughs> Medicare, it's true. But, but as they say, beige, don't age. <laughs> and I now have, uh, within my lifetime, my generation has experienced the following. The assassination of John F. Kennedy. The Detroit and Newark riots of 67. The Watts riot of 68. The Chicago Democratic Convention riots of 68. The assassination of Martin Luther King Jr., Robert F. Kennedy, Kent State, Vietnam, Pentagon Papers, Watergate, Tricky Dicky, who is signed from office in this case, <laughs> Enron, Civil Rights Movement, Rosa Parks, Rodney King, 16th Street Baptist Church bombing in Birmingham, Alabama, in which four innocent girls lost their lives. Amadou Diallo, Amna Louima, Oklahoma City bombing, Timothy McVeigh, World Trade, Center, World Trade Center bombings one and two, Columbine, Sandy Hook, Las Vegas shooting, nightclub shooting in Florida, and sadly the recently school shooting in Parkland, Florida, just to name a few. Do you survive? Yes, you do. Do you survive unscathed? No, you don't. They're called my generation, the last generation to have any faith in government. We presently have two local officials, Jeff Ryan and Mark Jonah, that are under a cloud of suspicion for misconduct in that in Jeff Klein's case, an allegation has been made of inappropriate behavior <coughs> with a female. I am fully aware that there are certain individuals whose first reaction is, well, these are just allegations. The question, that then begs to be asked is, what if this happened to one of your loved ones? Time. Will you be so dismissive of the allegation? Most importantly, I know of over 260 young women within the International Olympic Committee and the USA Gymnastics that would strongly argue that such allegations, at the very minimum, should raise a red flag if not launch an investigation. In the case of Mark Jonah, we have an allegation of nepotism. Hiring his great great grandmother's cousin on the father's side for service source, civil service position. This individual has not been in office for 60 days already, and there's a cloud over him. I am simply asking this board to be fully aware of these allegations that any future encounter with these two politicians should be pursued with eyes wide open. These allegations should not be swept under the rug. In closing, we will find out who will be on the right side of history, as we did with Watergate and the Pentagon Papers. Will it be Donald Trump, or will it be Mr. Oh, Robert Mr. Garcia, The smart money is on Mr. Mueller. Thank you. Thank you. opportunity to remind you now that the weather is getting nicer how important it is to come out to your civic association meetings and particularly to be a part of whichever one is in your area um, when we all work together I think the electeds look at us differently we become more powerful there's power in numbers as you all know and most of us whether you live on City Island or Pelham Bay or Port Fair LaSalle like I do, we will have pretty much the same problems. So if we work together to solve them, it's likely that we'll be much more successful. And if you have a problem that's unique to your area, then you have networks already built in. 
So I encourage you to do that. And um, Annie brought some um, applications for our association, the Waterbury List Isle Community Association, and the Pelham Bay, they're in the back. And just to give you an example of something that we are all working on, everybody knows that there's a problem with um, Einstein Weiler Hospital. We have gotten a lot of complaints. And I recently started to work with the New York State Nursing Association. They are corroborating what we're saying. We need more beds, no um, hallway placements, there are not enough nurses, the infection rate is sky high. If the professionals are saying that, then we know there really is a problem. Now, in order for us to be successful, my association is working on it, the community board is working on it, other associations like Country Club have been very helpful, um, uh, Morris Park has been very helpful, and we're going to see if we can get the other associations on board as well. So I wanted just to leave you with, I hope that on your way out, you will go out that way and look at the table. There's the New York State Nursing Association's petition there. They are trying to get as many signatures as possible to tell the CEOs um, at Einstein Weiler, and not only Einstein Weiler, but you know Montefiore in general, which now has 11 holdings, that they need to step up to the plate and be the hospital that we need them to be. So I ask you to please take the extra special time to sign the petition in the back. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Sandra Lutz, worship the Square Security Improvement Organization, or WISO. Okay. I'm here not as a talking liberal or to cause trouble today. Actually, I'm here to do a little commercial for WISO. Um, we have just put our schedule out for <coughs> spring and summer. We're out in the community every year working with the kids, doing programs, arts and crafts, face painting, organizing park events. I just wanted, since I happen to be in the neighborhood, to just come here and say we're going to have a full schedule this year, as always, Pearly Gates program, Family Fun Day, the library programs, also assisting other communities such as the health fair at 192 um, and what Earth Day? Earth Day in Pelham Bay Park. Yes, and others. We do. We, you know, sometimes other communities reach out to us. Uh, the bid, for example, fair at the square. That's one of our biggest days. So, if you're interested, if you have kids, your community the association is interested to know where we are, what's going on. WSZIO.org, or you can find us on Facebook. Thank you. Yes. Uh, good evening. I'm Skip Chicago. I'm with the City Island Chamber of Commerce. And I'd just like to spend a minute complaining. <laughs> it's it's got three minutes. That might be too much time. I, it's about two things. It's about basically road conditions. I'm trying to get to City Island from either Westchester or the Bronx is a horror. There are pothole after pothole after pothole after pothole. Now, I understand that we all deal with this all the time. But it's, as City Islanders, is if we take this and combine it with the construction in the beginning of the island, we're really in a lot of trouble. It's, it's difficult enough being a small business on this island. It truly is difficult. We have, it's a seasonal economy. We fight for every penny. So at this stage of the game, with Easter a few days away, and the roads still in the condition they're in, and the construction in the beginning of the island, which truly threatens our living, it's unacceptable. It's unacceptable. And what I'm asking is that we, we, we push the DOT to get these things done. We've, been, we've had several meetings now, and everybody's polite, and everybody says the right thing, but it's not getting done. And if it doesn't get done, instead of seven empty stores on City Island Avenue, there are going to be 12 or 13 empty stores on City Island. And that's a shame, particularly because it's avoidable. Please help us do that. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, 
Camry. Uh, last name. Eamon? Eamon Maui. Yep, that's me. Pretty loud, so you can hear me. Um, I was here a few months ago. Um, my name's Eamon Maui. I work at the New York Lawyers for the Public Interest. And in case you guys missed me on the way in, I am a, a double amputee. I run the Accessoride sort of help group. We're our, the Accessoride Reform Group. And so 60% of my job is arguing for people to have better service, and then 40% is using my big mouth so that people with disabilities aren't treated like crap, like we are all the time. I know folks from the DOT, I know folks from the MTA, I know folks from Accessoride, I don't work for Accessoride, thank God, but I use it every single day, and it still sucks. We just started an on-demand program, it still needs work, um, and so, and people also think that they can't just suddenly join a disabled club, but you can. I've only been in MPT four years, and we're all getting old, so think about that. And we need to recognize that Accessoride is a service that we not only pay for, but it should work. Um, and so, anyone ever has any questions about whether it's Accessoride, signing up, issues with eligibility, or any other disability-related issues, I'll be here. I live on Balcom Avenue, so I'm, you know, invested in coming here since I live in the community. I hang out at the Havana Cafe. I'm on East Tremont all the time. I live right down from the, uh, the Marina Del Rey. Like, I know the neighborhood, and I've only been here for a year. My boyfriend goes to the Maritime College getting his master's, so I know it. And I've been in New York my entire life. Um, I want to come to more meetings, but I have to go to every single community board meeting, including Staten Island. So it's fun. So I'm always a yeah. I'm, I'm also a smart ass in case you haven't noticed. So please let me know if there's anything. I'm always around, and like I said, I'm on Malcolm Avenue because I live there. So thank you. Lou Rocco, President of Westchester Square Civic. I've been active in my community for the past six years. Where in our community, the reason I'm here tonight is I don't want to get into accusing and doing. I'm active in my community 24-7. I live there. I love our seniors. I love our children. When I see that things don't get done, when you don't see me around, I'm out there. I'm out there making sure our parks get closed, Pearly Gate Park. I'm out there, people contact me when they're shooting up heroin in Pearly Gates and I've requested lighting and I just got a, someone called me and they're shooting up heroin in the female's bathroom. I can't go to the 45th precinct. I can't go to them because we are lacking services from them. And what I have is, all I do is when I call them, did you ever try the new service that they got? The, the, you can't get through to them, it got worse. All right, instead of that, on my paper, I said about parking. This community board has been saying we need parking. I got a hundred spots I could find. Do I do it? I just went and I want to thank Matthew Cruz. He has been instrumental on helping me on a couple factors, including chop shops and nasty and stuff right near our church. Thank you. Where we, we go and we have to pass there and hoodlums selling and everything. He worked on it. Can't say the precinct didn't do anything. We had a detective that's dedicated. We have other priest, cops in there that don't want to do anything that need to get out. That precinct council meeting, I don't think I'll ever go to one again. This is in my opinion. My opinion. They need to listen to the that's community. That's right. Listen to the community. All right, on other forums of this here, our parks, I requested lighting, which I heard we got again. We got There's always right. another way to twist this. Since we had no capital money for the parks and everything, we are trying to get DOT to light up the streets. On Trevon Avenue. I feel that my community is being missed over. We get homeless shelters. The disgust that comes out of this community, I come home, and I see a man who lives in a basement apartment urinating on my grass, defecating, urinating, all of this stuff. Where are we, people? Where is our community board? When you have to hinder me on doing my job after six years of no support, no nothing, I take care of my children. I've meant it. This is all stuff that maybe you need to know. I mentor the kids in my community without groups and cops and things. I got one going into the military. I got another one 
finished in high school because you know what? I'm tough. I'm tough. And I want to see them. Instead of feeding the system, I get them. 30 seconds. And I get them and I make sure education is number one. My wife, who has been deceased, she was an educator. And what she told me is get these kids educated. The disgrace of discrimination in my neighborhood, the disgrace of non service in my neighborhood. Recently, I was taken into Montefiore. I couldn't walk. You know what? I was ready for surgery, back surgery. You know what I said? I don't take medicine. I went and I asked God. I said, God, I'm on a mission. My neighborhood is going to regain its respect and everything. And I am on a mission. I am fine. Until my neighborhood gets its respect, till it gets clean, till these cops stop listening. The last part with the parking is that I actually, the PD feels that the parking is the least uh, important thing in the community. I've been asking Mr. Cruz, I've been asking them. They said that it has no, in the morning we get the sweeper comes by, they don't issue summonses. It's their most on the priority. When we had parking violations, you've seen the neighborhood was clean. I'm requesting parking, traffic come back to the neighborhood. They were dismissed because they were bothering the bid. I don't care about the bid. I care about my community first. If you don't have strong people in the community, they come out and they shop in the bid. Hello. And we've seen so much disgust, and I'm not going away. Thank you very much. Thanks. Now, evidently, I have two people here who don't care for the community council. Yeah, more than two. Like, stop. I'm president of four or five prison community council. That's what I'm here for tonight. That's what I wanted to speak about. So we are having our community council breakfast, which is going to be held on May 9th. Tickets are $15 for anybody who'd like to come. And I just want to tell you who our honorees are going to be this year. We have Bill Mahoney from Edgewater Park. We have Michelle Torrioni from Pelham Bay Taxpayers, Michael McNearney from Country Club Civic, Fred Rafto, and I hope I didn't mess that up, from City Island Civic, uh, Junius Williams from River Bay, and the Honorable James Vacca. So those will be our honorees this year. Again, the tickets are $15. By the way, the ticket price pays for less than 40% of the cost of the event. Our merchants like Skyler Hill Civic, like Skyler Hill Funeral Parlor, and other merchants along the Tremont Avenue and City Island are the ones who really donate and give to make this uh, event an actual profitable event so that the precinct council can continue to do the work it does throughout the year. So again, I just want to let you know, there are a few flyers in the back, and I have tickets available. Thank you. Uh, we have uh, Jose Rodriguez from Center Planning Office. You want to say a few words? Yes. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. Um, on behalf of Center Plan, I send greetings. Um, as you know, uh, this is a really hot month um, during the time that they deal with the budget, the month of March. But I, I'd like to uh, just briefly say that um, last month, Joe, Joe Boyko put it so eloquently, when are we going to truly advocate on behalf of the community when it comes to certain establishments that quite honestly really um, don't have the best interests of the community at heart. And the quality of life that is affected, the, the downgrading of the quality of life that is affected by these particular establishments, when are we going to stick up with the community? That being said, Senator Klein sent out a letter in opposition even though the resolution passed against Maine and Puerto Rico. Not yet, not yet. No? Later on. Um, but in light of what transpired oh, earlier this month. I'm mistaken. I thought you mentioned the, the letter for oh. for vapor. Oh. No. No. I'm, 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 I'm saying, I'm saying. Um, I'm wishing. <laughs> so you don't want me to mention that. You don't want me to mention the vapor stuff. You can. Okay. Yeah, of course, of course, of course. So we did the letter made in Puerto Rico. What recently transpired in East Tremont with the Vapor Lounge, I mean, I get it. Everyone has to, you know, earn and, and make a living. But if you're a restaurant, you are a restaurant. If you are a nightlife establishment, then you must act accordingly and responsibly. That's what we are asking for. 
And it has nothing to do with race or ethnicity or what type of establishment it is. It's about respect. And so that being said, Senator Klein and Assemblymember Benedetto wrote a letter to the SLA today asking them to suspend their license upon a formal investigation. We sent a, a, a copy to the community board. As I said, we sent a copy to the SLA. Um, now I understand that they're restructuring their business. Um, that's fine and dandy and, and no disrespect or, or any ill will towards anyone who owns you know, this establishment. But if you're the same owner and you, and you weren't able to provide a level of safety, but yet you're changing the structure, you can't blame the community for not trusting your food. Um, that's what I'll say on that. And since we're in City Island, also know that our office, Councilmember Joe and I, and uh, Assemblymember Benedetto sent a letter to the MTA on behalf of the City Island Civic Association to request full 24-hour service of the BX29 uh, bus service. Thank you. Adam Rebunez from Councilmember Ting's office. How's everyone doing? I'll try to make it uh, really short. Um, I'm assuming in your you're going to talk about the DSA and everything in your district. Uh, welcome to uh, you know. Welcome you guys probably saw on the front cover of uh, Bronx Times last week um, uh, sort of uh, the advocacy of our office, Councilman King's office, as well as uh, Matt Cruz, a lot of folks from uh, from River Bay Co-op. Um, if you've heard about the big gigantic signs. Uh, um, uh, at Bartow and Baychester on the highway uh, that they were trying to put up. They were essentially trying to put up like 40 in one signs and it was going to be gigantic. Um, so the process, uh, it, uh, their their appeal was denied. They're trying to appeal it again to someone. I don't you know if you want to go into more. Um, you read about it in the Bronx Times, but we're all very happy that, you know, sometimes, you know, a bunch of people go to a room and, you know, stand up and say, do the, you know, and everyone sort of heard the message and voted it down. So that was pretty much, you know, the main co-op thing we're working on. Um, Councilman King is now the chair of the Juvenile Justice Committee. Um, so that's something we're uh, sort of getting very active in. There's a lot of reforms um, that have sort of gone through that you got to pay for. Them. So, um, that, you know, with 16 and 17 year olds, they uh, uh, are, are, are going to be treated much, uh, much more like kids because they are kids. Um, so that's the kind of thing that, you know, you, you put a policy in place, you got you to gotta figure out how to sort of fund it, how to, you know, so that's something uh, that Councilman King is working on right now. And it's getting long. Let's, uh, thank you. Thanks for that. <laughs> Motion to 